All right, y'all. Let me talk to you. Normally, I have like an opening um, monologue or a setup, but um, I'm going to play you guys a clip. Um, the clip I'm playing has not yet. It's scheduled to be released on my YouTube channel on Friday, but I am going to play it for you today as a setup for today's thing. Now, for those of you who follow me on TikTok, it's actually already up on TikTok, but I'm going to play it real quick and then we're going to get into this. All right. Black men in this space, the first thing we did before there was a conversation about the women, the first thing we did was have a conversation about the fact that the most of us black men are not men and that we have to go out and become the thing that we want to have reflected in our homes and our lives, not only from a relational standpoint, but from a confidence standpoint, from a health standpoint. We have to go out and learn the thing that we weren't able to learn because there was no, because most of our fathers who are supposed to be there to teach us this, and by the way, our fathers don't even know that either, our generation of fathers. To become a thing, to, to say the thing that is a thing. And now that black men are saying that said the th that thing that is a thing for black men, and we started talking now, a lot of us that are starting to improve, starting to become aware, start starting to understand what we mean to our community and how important it is for us to grow a fucking backbone and not be afraid of our women. Now that we turn the conversation to our women, we get to really now start to understand just how undervalued, underestimated, and how marginalized black men actually are, not just in this country, but also on a, on a micro level within our own family structure. We grew up thinking that us being marginalized or hearing our mothers talk about how crappy men are was just normal because we didn't really understand that they, we didn't think they were talking about us specifically because we were their sons and daughter, their, we were their sons. But when you start to see that your mother co-signed some of the bullshit that the other fuck around women did, your mother was actually talking about you and the fact that she was give she did not give you game about the true nature of a woman and how women actually respond and the fact that the way that she taught you how to engage with a woman would leave you unable to manage a relationship with a woman because it wasn't honest about what a woman needed or wanted all right everybody listen let me remove this from the studio. Uh, that clip came from a stream that I did last week, but I chopped it up and made it put put it out because of what I was talking about specifically. And I had no idea until to until last night how relevant what I was going to be saying uh, that clip was is going to be re relevant to today's stream. Let me talk a little bit about our black men. I'm talking about black men. I will say right now that our between adults, I'm going to label a black man. Well, black men is legally an adult at 18, but I'm going to start with between 25 and my age, which is about 45 years old. So that's a good, good span of black men that I'm going to be talking about. Not only were we taught improperly, we, I, I don't want to say we were brainwashed because how can you be brainwashed when you were when the thing that you, the things and behaviors and mindsets and what you found to be the right thing to do was instilled from you from from birth and today is not going to be a knock on the single mothers even though I'm going to reference single motherhood the vast majority of black men right now between ages of 25 and 45 or 25 and 50 we were all raised, most of us, 80% of us were raised in single mother households. And so our mothers were the direct influence on our development. They were the direct influence on our sense of right and wrong. They were our direct influence on how we should act and move throughout, um, throughout, throughout this life. We were, our behavior patterns were established by our mothers. 
our how we see view the world was established through through the eyes of our mothers how we make our decisions and rationalize our decision making was done through the prism of our mothers we most of us have our mothers way of thinking assessing and looking at situations and i'm not going to call it a good or a bad thing but what that has done for a large portion of men it has removed a piece of um of manhood away from you especially the piece to do critical thinking and the critical analysis in the frame and in and in the mode that you're supposed to do and because of this so many of us make decisions that are that leave us potentially as the face of stupid and we make decisions and we accept things that um we accept we accept um situations or we agree to situations that um we would not probably normally accept or agree to if we had been um giving given a separate set of tools let me be a little bit more specific black men between the ages of 25 and 45 or 50 are very comfortable with being led by our women we are very comfortable with deferring to our women we are very comfortable with letting our women make the decisions for us, for our families, and for uh, and for our situations. We are very comfortable with being taken care of by our women. We, to a degree, do not find these things um, wrong or out of order or out of balance because that's all we know. We don't know anything else, and we do not know that those things that we that we are okay with are things that we should not be okay with. And you got these uh, this group of men, and I'm being very general and I'm being very generic because not all of us fit into this category, but far too many of us do. I mean, it's more of us that fit into this category than than we do not. How do you think you come up with the term simp? You know, because there's so many of us out here doing, do, you know, doing this. And we accept the leadership, the direction, the 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 um, uh, uh, analysis of our ladies. And I'm not saying that our ladies at times do not provide sound, good analysis or that they don't make sound, good decisions because they do. But oftentimes we are as black men of this of the from 25 to 50. We are very comfortable with our women just presenting an option and us going okay with it. We're comfortable with it because that's all we've seen. All we know is female leadership, female decision making, female incitement, that's a female behavior, female rationale. That's all we know. And we take that as a man and we apply it to ourselves and then we exercise it in the real world. But the problem with the real world is at times the way, the fact that we um, defer to our training, our raising, our development, and we haven't, and, and the fact that we don't, we often do not accept that, that the that the way we think, analyze, and assess things is not the way that a man should be doing it. We will find ourselves in situations where we don't necessarily handle our business the right way.